Chapter 175 Auditory Defects Types and Causes Of Auditory Defects Auditory defects may be either partial or complete. Auditory defects are of two types, conduction deafness, nerve deafness, conduction deafness. Conduction deafness is the type of deafness that occurs due to impairment in transmission of sound waves in the external ear or middle ear. Causes for conduction deafness. Obstruction of external auditory meatus with dry wax or foreign bodies. Thickening of tympanic membrane due to repeated middle ear infection. Perforation of tympanic membrane due to inequality of pressure on either side. Otitis media, inflammation of middle ear. Otosclerosis, fixation of footplate of stapes against oval window, due to ankylosis. Ankylosis means the abnormal immobility and consolidation of a joint. Nerve deafness. Nerve deafness is the deafness caused by damage of any structure in cochlea, such as hair cell, organ of corti, basilar membrane or cochlear duct or the lesion in the auditory pathway. Causes for nerve deafness. Degeneration of hair cells due to some antibiotics like streptomycin and gentamicin. Damage of cochlea by prolonged exposure to loud noise. Tumor affecting 8 cranial nerve. Tests for hearing. There are various tests to assess the sensation of hearing. However, some simple tests called bedside tests are usually carried before doing conventional types of hearing tests. Such simple tests are useful to know whether the hearing is normal or less. Bedside tests, whispering test. Tickling of watch test. Whispering test. The examiner stands about 60 centimeters away from the subject at his side and whispers some words. If the subject is not able to hear the whisper, then hearing deficit is suspected. Tickling of watch test. Wrist watch with tickling sound is kept near the ear of the subject. The subject suffering from hearing defects cannot hear the tickling sound of watch. Routine tests for hearing. Routine tests for hearing are of three types. Rhine test, Weber test, audiometry. First two tests are done by using a tuning fork with high frequency. Mostly, a tuning fork with 512 cycles per second is used. By turning fork tests, only the nature of auditory defect is determined. By audiometry, both nature and severity of auditory defects can be determined. Rhine test base of a vibrating tuning fork is placed on mastoid process, until the subject cannot feel the vibration and cannot hear the sound. When the subject does not hear the sound anymore, the tuning fork is held in air in front of the ear of same side. Normal person hears vibration in air even after the bone conduction ceases because, in normal conditions, air conduction via ossicles is better than bone conduction. But in conduction deafness, the vibrations in air are not heard after cessation of bone conduction. Thus in conduction deafness, the bone conduction is better than air conduction. In nerve deafness, both air conduction and bone conduction are diminished or lost. Weber test. Base of a vibrating tuning fork is placed on the vertex of skull or the middle of forehead. Normal person hears the sound equally on both sides. In unilateral conduction deafness, deafness in one ear, the sound is heard louder in diseased ear. In unaffected ear, there is a masking effect of environmental noise. So, the sound through bone conduction is not heard as clearly as on the affected side. In affected side, the sound is louder due to the absence of masking effect of environmental noise. During unilateral nerve deafness, sound is heard louder in the normal ear. Audiometry Audiometry is the technique used to determine the nature and the severity of auditory defect. An instrument called audiometer is used. This instrument is an electronic function generator or oscillator, connected to an earphone. This instrument is capable of generating sound waves of different frequencies from lowest to highest. Intensity, 
loudness or volume, of sound at each frequency is adjusted on the basis of previous studies in normal persons. Thus, before calibrating the instrument, minimum, threshold, volume or intensity or loudness, for each frequency of sound heard by normal persons is determined. Minimum intensity is set in the instrument as zero. Now, while testing the patient, the loudness is increased above zero level, Fig 175.1. Intensity of sound is expressed in decibel, dB. At a particular frequency, if the patient hears the sound with loudness of 30 dB above zero level, the person is said to have hearing loss of 30 dB for that particular frequency. During the tests by audiometer, the subject's ability to hear the sounds with 8 to 10 different frequencies is observed and the hearing loss is determined for each frequency. By using these values, the audiogram is plotted. Audiometer has an electronic vibrator also. It is used to test the bone conduction from mastoid process into the cochlea.